Good morning. I don't know how good, it, good this is going to be. I used all my energy for class. So. <laughs> <laughs> the title of my sermon this morning, it's a, it's a week late, but it's uh, thankfulness to God. And uh, no matter how terrible circumstances seem, it seems like being a Christian, it makes things a lot easier. It's not, not that they're not terrible and things like that, but it makes it a lot easier. And I want to reference 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Have you ever met somebody that could not see the good in anything? Negative Nelson, I guess you might call him, or Nellie. By President Proclamation, last Thursday was traditionally a day of National Thanksgiving. Now you need to realize that it doesn't say give thanks for all the circumstances, the verse I just read, because some circumstances are going to be the things that get you down. But with God's help, we can always make, them, make it through. No matter how terrible, God was always there with us. Two women who had seen, hadn't seen each other in several years met at a convention and they began filling each, uh, filling each other in on what had happened in their lives since the last time they met. The one woman said, I got married two years ago. And her friend said, oh, that's good, her friend, her friend replied. Well, no, not really, the first one said. My husband is twice my age and he stinks. <laughs> oh, that's bad, her friend replied. Well, not really, she said. He built me a, million, a multi-million dollar home, or he's a multi-millionaire. Oh, that's good, her friend replied. Well, not really, she said. He's mean and he stinks. <laughs> oh, that's bad, her friend said. Well, no, not really, she said. He built me a multi-million dollar home. Oh, that's good, her friend replied. Well, not really, she said. It burned down last month. Oh, that's bad, her friend said. Well, not really. He was in it when it burned. <laughs> As I read that, I thought to myself, some people just can't think good, and think good about anything except, unless it's a disaster. Then it's good. <laughs> Thanksgiving was Thursday. And that's when the grandkids and the kids show you their turkeys. They cut out a construction paper along with pictures of pilgrims with funny shoes and hats. For Thanksgiving, our president usually issues a Thanksgiving proclamation and our very secular government that almost chokes every time it says the word God suddenly projects an air of religion and encourages us all to be thankful for at least this one day of the year. It's sad what's going on in our country sometimes about not wanting to say the word God or admit that you're a Christian. You see, Thanksgiving is an unusual holiday because it combines, it's one holiday that combines God, government, and society. And it is generally considered acceptable for everyone, regardless of religion, to be thankful on Thanksgiving Day. Now, I don't, know, well, I don't know about you, but that kind of concerns me. Because when something becomes universally accepted, it has usually been drastically watered down or changed from its original purpose. We have that funny way of doing that in this country. Watering things down to where sin's okay. And it's legal. So I encourage you this morning to take two safeguards to protect your thanksgiving, not just one day a year, but always. Three things we need to remember. Number one is this, make sure that you are thankful to the right somebody. If we're going to say thank you to somebody, make sure that it's that right somebody. Harriet Martineau was an atheist. One morning, she and her friends stepped out into the glory of a beautiful fall morning. 
As she, saw, as she saw the brilliant sun peeking through the haze, and the frost of the meadow, and the brightly colored leaves making their way lazily to the ground, she was filled with its beauty and burst forth with, I am just so grateful for it all. And her believing friend looked at her and asked, Grateful to whom, my dear? God created all this beauty for us to look at. Sunrises, sunsets. Don't like the rake leaves? They sure look good on the trees when they're colorful. But I hate to rake them. Luckily I don't have to do that anymore. So That's a good question at Thanksgiving. Are you grateful? And who are you grateful to? King David knew the answer to that question about gratefulness. If, everyone, if anyone ever had a cause to lift his voice in thanksgiving to God, David was that man. A shepherd boy who became a national hero. A hunted fugitive who became its king. A condemned sinner who became a man after God's own heart. It's any wonder that when he wrote the 103rd Psalm, he began by, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and that all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So I say it again, when you decide to be thankful, be sure that you, like David are thankful to the right person. Now the second safeguard that I think we need to, for Thanksgiving is make sure you thank God for the right reason. So we went over who we're going to thank God, but now we're going to look at thanking Him for the right reasons. If you were to draw up a Thanksgiving list of things of which you are thankful, what would you put on that list? We, when we sit down at the dinner table, we decided to ask what we to say what we were thankful for. So we did that. And I was as I was doing that, I thought to myself, we really have to be thankful to God for everything we have. All this table spread here in front. My wife, we were there, so you know, it's. Uh, something we really have to be thankful for. One thing I'm thankful for is the blessing of living in the United States of America. If you watch the news and you look at other countries and their lifestyles and things that are going on, you soon realize that we should be thankful for this country in which we live and the freedoms that we share. Another thing, despite all my aches and pains, I'm thankful for physical blessings too. Someone said, count your fingers and your toes, and if your mind is sharp enough to do that, then give God thanks for your mind too. <laughs> Thank Him that you can see. Thank Him that you have the ability to move from one place to another. Thank God for physical strength that he gives me every day. Those are the things that I thank God for. And again, I thank him for supplying me with everything I really need. No, I don't have everything. But I have everything I need. I am greatly blessed with everything I need. He meets our needs. And he is the supplier of every good and perfect gift that comes my way. Now I realize that our list could go on and on, but let's take a look at the list that David made in that 103rd Psalm. Beginning with verse 3. He begins by thanking God for being a God who forgives all your iniquities or sins. David knew what... He, David knew what was important. He doesn't begin by thanking God for making him king. 
He doesn't mention that Israel had become the strongest nation in the world during his reign. No, first of all, he thanks God for forgiving our sins and our iniquities. Which is probably the same and same together. May I suggest that that is the most precious gift any of us ever could receive from God. Just think about that for a minute. Without that gift, we have no hope. God has provided the way for our sins to be forgiven. Then he says that God heals all your diseases. David didn't know anything about germs or infection. All he knew was when people of Israel obeyed God's law, they didn't have the plagues that laid waste the nations around them. And when trouble arose and they called upon God for help, he was always there to help them. We're studying in the Bible now a section of the Bible that I probably call them probably the most negative section in the Bible is the prophets when you're when you're doing the prophets and some of the Old Testament because God is warning them to stay with him and if they would just look back through history the nation that stayed with him prospered and everything worked for them but no they decide to run the other way we not we may not be able to understand everything that happens in this life but I'm convinced that God is still the great physician and that he knows the deepest needs of my life even better than I do. And whether it's a physical need, a physiological need, or a spiritual need, I'm sure God will always do what's best for me. And I don't know about you, but I'm really thankful for that. I really am, that I have God. Next, David said, God redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. God certainly did that for David, and he's still doing it for us today, really, when you come right down to it. I really like that. Almost everybody seems to be searching for a fountain of youth, but I'm a realist, and when I stand in front of the mirror, I realize that I wasn't born with this gray hair. Or the wrinkles I have. Maybe Paul explains it best when he said that even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. And that's in 2 Corinthians 4.16. And as I look at King David's thanksgiving list, it's easy for us to say that's great. That's just great. We can just add his list to ours. Right? And join together in thanking God for all the joys and blessings He showered down upon us every day. And thirdly, we need to realize that even though bad things happen, we can still praise God. Isn't that ridiculous? When bad things happen, we can still praise God. When bad things happen, I get down. But I have to think about God. I have to think about what, where I'm at and what I'm doing. And what my life's all about. And that's when that idea of praise can still come in to our lives. Each week our congregation spends time praying for other people. In our prayers are some who are anticipating surgeries or procedures, others with terminal illnesses, some who are struggling with family or financial problems. In fact, if the whole truth were known, everybody here is suffering in one way or another. Or if not today, then maybe tomorrow. It was Job who said, Yet man is born to trouble as the spark flies upward. When I was a kid, we used to camp out in the woods all the time. I guess I was running from something, but that's another story. But we used to sleep out a lot in the summertime. And as you watch that fire, when you throw a log on the fire, you see those sparks going up. And that's what Job's talking about here. You having trouble is as sure as those sparks 
jump in the air. Yet even though bad things happen to us, God's people, I myself, I'll still praise God. I'll still praise Him, no matter what. And I know everyone in this room would probably do the same thing. Praise God. It's not easy to do it when we're in trouble, but why do we do it? Because the, the great difference between God's people and all the rest is that God's people do not suffer alone. When we went through some times, I know I said this before, but this fits in here. When we went through some times, and I was in the Akron hospital with my wife, and she was really bad, and I sent out a text at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I got three or four texts back at 4 o'clock in the morning. Sorry I woke you. <laughs> but I thought I needed you, is why I did it. And not, I'm not slighting anybody that didn't send me a text because I know you were still, you still read it and thought about me. But I got text back at that time of the morning. And that makes you feel like you're being hugged, really, when you come right down to it. It just really makes you feel like you're being hugged. I know it's kind of dorky, but that's what kind of makes you feel like that you're being surrounded by people that really love you and really want you to make it through. In Exodus 3, 7, God is saying, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cries because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. God knew they were suffering, but one thing we've got to realize about that story, he didn't come right away. There were years involved in them praying and praying and praying. And then Moses came along and had to go through all those plagues and everything else by the time they were finally released. And this goes into my sermon I preached last, last week. Perseverance in prayer. You have, to, you have to persevere in your prayers. I want to leave you with this prayer that someone wrote. I lift my heart to thee, O God, in gratitude and praise for all thy blessings of the past and of those future days. I thank thee for my faithful friends, for sunshine and the rain, and every blessing hidden or seen, though some may come from pain. O God, I accept my thanks to thee. O God, accept my thanks to thee each time I come to pray, and grant that each day I live will be Thanksgiving Day. We do it one time a year in this country, but I don't know about you. I may not act like it sometimes. God probably saying, don't say that because you don't act like it. But I try to act like it. I try to act like I'm thankful every day for each and everything that I have. And sometimes we get discouraged and sometimes we go through some hard times. But we have to look to the future. We have to look to what is coming when we leave this earth. And is it worth working for? Yes, it's definitely worth working for. This morning, if you're here and you're going through the trials of life without the help of Jesus, then we want you to know you don't have to continue down that road any longer. We can offer you the opportunity for forgiveness of your sins through the precious blood of Jesus so that you can begin a life that you will hopefully say I thank you Lord for forgiving me of my sins if that is your desire then this morning we can baptize you for the remission of your sins and Jesus will add you to his church at that very moment as soon as you profess your faith to him and you're baptized and then we need to follow the example that's set in the Bible or if you're here and may be already a Christian and need the prayers of the church the whole church will pray for you we'll pray for you publicly and I offer this 
invitation and I pray that if you have a need, you'll come as we stand and sing. Bring Christ your